Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. Where's your witness? In the evidence. That's hearsay. It's notarized. I still say it's hearsay. She's fair. You gotta help these young men learn how to do this the right way. Yes, Your Honor. She's firm. Can I say something, Your Honor? No, okay. I don't need to say anything else. She's honest. I'm not your child and I'm not your friend. That's the order in court. Goodbye. This is Justice with Judge Maybelline. All rise. Both parties raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. The court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. Thank you. You may be seated. This is the matter of Anthony Armstrong versus Mr. Ryan Strong. And I understand you're suing him for $1,600 and asking for a refund of the fees you paid him as a trainer. Is that right? Yes. So why do you want your money back? I want my money back because I believe Ryan, my ex-trainer, provided an unhealthy environment for me to fulfill and reach my goals that he how, promised. How did he do that? By, he ended up sleeping with my girlfriend. Your trainer slept with your girlfriend? My ex-trainer. Yes, my ex-trainer ended up sleeping with my then girlfriend. Okay, so how did we get to that point? Tell me, take me back. How did you start this training session with Mr. Mr. Strong? So I first met Mr. Strong about 18 months ago when we first started Locked In. I just walked into his gym. I was trying to change my life, change my goals. I was depressed, had a lot of unhealthy habits. Mr. Strong assured me that he could help me reach my goals. So I signed up with his contract. He offered me a great deal. And he was a former professional basketball player himself. So I was like, man seen a lot in them that I was motivated by, so I locked in with them ever since. Then, what were your bad habits? My bad habits just eating unhealthy, eating unhealthy, just being around, wasn't raised the correct way, but you know, got to make better changes day by day, so. And why did you choose his gym? Uh, his gym, he's the best looking man out of everybody around. All right, then what happened during the course of training? Uh, during the course of training, it started off great. We were hitting it off, we even developed a friendship. Uh, man, every day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we were training. I introduced my girlfriend, I brought my girlfriend in. My girlfriend was getting inspired by everything she seen me doing, competing, lifting. So she came, introduced them guys. They developed a friendship. I thought nothing of it. Didn't want to look like an insecure guy, you know? Let, let my girlfriend have friends, let my girlfriend train. So comes to find out, moving on down the line, it was one of my last sessions. He pulled me to the side, he pulled me outside the gym. I knew something was up then because he never pulls me outside the gym. This guy's crazy. So he never pulls me outside. We stepped outside. He told me straight to my face, man to man. He said, hey, man, I got feelings for your girlfriend. I didn't even know anything about it at the time. And they have been sleeping with each other for the past two months. Whoa. How long have you been training with him? 18 months. So what does the $1,600 represent? The $1,600 represents the training fees for the three, three times a week for the month. The meal plans, he makes me three meals a day for the month, and also the gym membership, which I believe is 110. So you're asking for one month's training, the total of that is one month's training fee? The total of that compromises all of those fees I just recognized. Okay. The nutrition, the training, and But the you've gym been membership. training for 18 months, what you pay by the month? Yes, the first of every month it will get drafted out. And when did you find out? What week were you in in that month when you found out that he had the affair with your girlfriend? It was in the first week. It was in the first week. First, first week. So it was the beginning of a, a new month? The beginning of a new month. We only had a And that's what you're back. asking for a refund? I want the entire month back. Okay. All right. Let me hear from you, Mr. Strong. I own a small gym. Um, I've owned it for seven years. I'm really good at what I do. Um, I don't consider things a diet. I consider it a lifestyle. Right. Um, lifestyle change. Yes, ma'am. Um, usually you can tell a lot about somebody when they walk into your gym by their body language, uh, looking into their eyes. Um, and when he walked in, he was very serious. And, really? um, and I was like, hey, what, what can we do for you? I can see that you're ready to go. And he was like, man, I need to make changes. He said, I need to live better. Um, I want to I want to have kids eventually. I want to be able to live for them. Um, you know, you can live 80 years, but what will your quality of life be? All right. 
So how'd you get into an affair with his, or did you get into a, an affair with his girlfriend? Yes, ma'am, I yeah, did. Yeah, because you confessed. So how yeah. did that happen? Yes, ma'am, I did. Um, so as what, what comes with actually training people, you end up forming a bond. Mm -hmm. um, and some closer than others. Um, after a while, him and I became close. Uh, he would like invite me to hang out with him and his girlfriend uh, outside of the gym, um, and then we all became close. Um, I did eventually divulge that I was going through a divorce myself, um, and so, you know, that actually, you know, when you share something like that, you know, um, it actually uh, uh, strengthens the, the bond between each other. Uh, and they were there for me, encouraging me, you know, letting me know everything was going to be, be okay. Um, but on the flip side of that, too, um, they were having some trouble in their relationship as well. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. I ended up drinking, and one thing led to another. I know, I get so sick of that phrase, one thing led to another. No, it didn't. One thing led to y'all sleep with each other. Just go ahead on and say it. And later. She had offered to um, move my car um, because I have to park on the street. I said yes, I would help her out. And then what happened eventually was I was getting calls from her every day. Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Anthony Armstrong who is suing Ryan Strong for $1,600. At some point, I guess she talked about what was going on what in their relationship with, with you. Yes. Did he talk about it as well? Yeah, not, not as much detail, um, you know. But well, when did you have time to see her? What it came down to it is um, I ended up actually training her, bringing her on as a client eventually. Um, and just from based off of what she told me, um, you know, that she was feeling, you know, neglected and lonely at times because he was really not around. Yeah, but she's feeling neglected and lonely, and you know the man is out working, and he's out in these competitions, and you're his trainer. I mean, professionally, don't you know that you don't deal with the, the man's wife? What well, was his girlfriend, but yes. Girlfriend, um, whatever. Yeah, I understand, but, um, and you're, you're absolutely right, and I'm not trying to make excuses And you're going to argue over giving the man, not giving the man his money back when he want to get out from under the two of you? Well, and I understand that, too, but he did work out for the first week of that month, though. If all that man is asking for is his money back after working out the first week, as opposed to kicking your behind, which a lot of people would do, and you all would end up in one of these kind of situations. Yeah, you could try. Behind what was happening. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. But you should not want anyone at your business who is dissatisfied with the services that you're offering and who is under that situation. You know, mentally, he's in a different space now. Yes, ma'am. When I did break it to him, um, I did, I did, you know, have a suggestion about uh, shifting him over to one of my other trainers, and then I to accommodate that, and I wouldn't even be in the gym when he came to train. He he came to you wounded. He said he was in a different mental state. He was doing things that he shouldn't be shouldn't do. He was not taking care of his body. He was not being a good steward over his body. Now you got him into a good space in his life. Yes, ma'am. And this blow hits him. You know that could devastate him and put him back out there acting crazy. You're right. Right? Yes, ma'am. I understand, Ms. what's her name, Kim Jones, she's here? The woman in question? Yes, yes. let here. me see what she has to say. Yes, take your place. Has she been sworn? She was sworn, Anna. Hi, Ms. Jones, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Fine. How'd you end up in a relationship with Mr. Strong, your trainer. Yes, well, we were going to a party, all three together, and he, um, Anthony introduced me to Ryan, and I saw that Anthony, you know, became so confident, and he just, like, was glowing, and I was like, well, I wanna be like that, too. So I introduced myself to Ryan, and I was like, can you be my trainer as well? Okay, and that's okay that he's your trainer, but how'd he end up being your man? Well, at the Friendsgiving, um, you know, he was drinking, and I ended up drinking, and one thing led to another. I know, I get so sick of that phrase, one thing led to another. No, it didn't. One thing led to y'all sleep with each other. Just go ahead on and say it. We ended up sleeping together. There you go. Go um, come on, be a woman about it. Be a man about it. Tell it all. Say it out. Be bold. We one thing led to another. Bull. You, you and him ended up sleeping together. Yeah, and we went to an, we went in an Uber um, back to my house actually, and that's how everything led. So you were willing 
to let go of your relationship with Mr. Armstrong that you had had for how many years? Two. Two years after meeting this man and sleeping with him one night. Yes, because I, I just felt like he wasn't giving me what he used to give me. And what's um, that? We used to go out. We used to have dates. We used to just do so much together, and, and he just started working so much, and I just felt lonely. Yeah, but Mr. Armstrong works a lot, too. Mr. Strong works a lot, too, because he had all these people he's training. Yeah, but, but what's he, the difference? He was giving me more attention, the mm. attention that I actually needed, because every time I was at home, I was just lonely. Okay, so Mr. Mr. Uh, Strong, you understand that. When you get too many clients and can't give her all the attention that you need, that she needs, she may go on over to somebody else. Uh, yeah. You understand that, yes, huh? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You know what you're dealing with, huh? I do now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what you're working with, right? Yes, ma'am. Because if she cheated on him and went to you when she's with him, what makes you think she's going to be faithful? And vice versa. If you did it and you knew she had another man, what makes you think he's going to be faithful to you when another woman shows up? that looks as well to him as you do, or that gets his attention like you did. The word is called commitment. Don't you all understand that word? Maybe you need to look it up, read the definition of it. I, I mean, I just, I, I really just felt like I wasn't getting the attention that I needed, and... You were getting plenty of attention. When he was trained and you got the attention you needed, you need to find some other way to get attention. You had a man in your life. That's just rude. I think you need to give the man his money back in this relationship while it's peaceful. Can while we you can meet, all... So the, him working that first, him working out that first week, can we, can we meet somewhere in the middle? Well, that? okay. So it's sixteen hundred dollars for the month. Yes, There's usually four weeks in a month. Yes, I subtract four hundred dollars. You owe him twelve hundred dollars. No judgment way. for the plaintiff. No way. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $1,200. At least I got my money back, but done with y'all. Now I feel like we just took two steps back in the justice system right now. Whatever. So man. we business decisions, now we're going on oh, feelings. I don't need to care about none of that. Oh, man, maybe if you would have been around for your woman, we wouldn't even be oh, in this position. All right, we don't need to go there. Gather your belongings. You can exit behind you. Coming up. I got fed up. I felt like she was using me. I felt like I was being very disrespected. Um, and I did just, you agree to move her car? I did agree to move her car, and I did. Did and you move her car each, each time you needed to move her car? In the beginning. Justice with Judge Maybelline. This is the matter of Darla Vincent versus Cassandra Hutchinson, suing her for $856, the cost of your parking tickets and towing service for your vehicle. Is that right? Yes. So I'm trying to figure out how is the defendant responsible for your parking tickets and the towing of your vehicle? I haven't seen my family in over three years, so I went home to see them in Washington, D.C. Um, I had left my car in Cassandra's care because we were, I mean, we were pretty close. We were very neighborly, and I had, she had offered to um, move my car um, because I have to park on the street. Um, you see, there's like street sweeping, so I have to move my car twice a week. I had given her my car keys, and I also gave her my house keys, um, because I had also asked her to um, bring in some packages that might be delivered to me. So when I came home, um, my car was gone, and when I had asked a neighbor, they said they had saw it get towed away. And I asked Cassandra, and she said, well, I thought, you know, you had uh, unpaid parking tickets. And so she, and I don't think she moved my car. So the tow and the one parking ticket was $856? Yes. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. What about the rest of them? Um, the rest of them, um, there, were, there were a couple. So can I see all of the tickets so I can know that this cost is just this one ticket? Um, I do not have. Oh, okay. Rest. Let me hear your side while she's looking up giving me the evidence, Ms. Hutchinson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, basically, I'm being charged $856 for tickets that she owes. Um, I said, yes, I would help her out. And then what happened eventually was I was getting calls from her every day. Coming up. I told her I was done because oh, she did had you been- tell her that? Yes, I have it in, I have it in a text. I, I told her I was done. Closed captioning provided by 
We're back with the case of Darla Vincent, who is suing Cassandra Hutchinson for ticket and tow fees. I got fed up. I felt like she was using me. I felt like I was being very disrespected. Um, and I did just, you agree to move her car? I did agree to move her car, and I did. Did and you move her car each, each time you needed to move her car? In the beginning. In the beginning? Yes. So what is the beginning? How many times did you move it? Twice. Okay, so what happened the third time? Why didn't you move it? Because she kept on texting me and, and kept texting, e texting me and calling me and asking me. Uh, she had a package that got, uh, went back to D.C. that went to her parents' house. She wanted me to uh, receive it for her. She had a friend that was staying next door, so she wanted me to give this friend a key. So what happened with moving the car? What does that have to do with you moving? Well, so I you told decided her, I I'm told not going to move it anymore? Done. I told her I was done. Because oh, she did had you been, tell her that? Yes, I have it in, I have it in a text. I, I told her I was done. Let me see the text. So she, you knew how long she would be gone, right? Yes. And you promised that you would move the car for the two and a half weeks she would be gone? Yes. So you didn't keep your promise. If, if, you, if you didn't move it and, and with the two and a half weeks weren't up, Oh, she wanted you to water the plant, mm -hmm. to send a package. Okay, when she told you I'm done and I'm not going to move your car anymore, did you... Did you uh, you got that text, right? Yeah, yeah. And did you try to make arrangements with the person that was staying in your apartment to no. move your car? No, it was only for one night. The my, my friend, um, she's just she was only in LA for one night. She just needed a place to stay. Okay, so when she her. told you she wasn't going to do it anymore, did you call anyone else to give to ask her to give the key to someone else to have it moved? You didn't have any other person. No, okay. all my friends are in DC. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Promotional consideration provided by. Okay, so I think, Ms. Uh, Hutchison, you, you have a, you made a promise that you would move the car. You can't decide in the middle of this, I'm tired of it all and I'm not going to do it, particularly when she's out of state and you have her keys and you said that I will move the car. Mm -hmm. Now, so I am going to charge you with that one ticket she got on the day you failed to put the car over to the opposite side of the street. So that ticket was $73, but I'm not going to charge her with the tow because the tow was for all of those other unpaid parking tickets. Your car was booted and towed. Towing is, is only when you have unpaid parking tickets or your car is not registered. That's the time the car gets towed. So you're responsible for those other unpaid parking tickets and for the towing. It was going to happen eventually. It just happened while you were gone. But that's not her responsibility. So judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $73, the cost of the uh, parking ticket for the day you should have moved the car. So judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $73. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $73. I wish it hadn't come to this. Mm -hmm. um, I've never done this before. And I just hope that our relationship can go back to the way it was. I don't know. I don't know. I felt I was being taken advantage of. 